Hi guys, Shamion here. I hope all is well. Today I am going to do a Trinidad and Tobago corn soup for you all. For that, you will need split pea, yellow split peas, of course. If you didn't know, uh, split peas, it comes in green also, right? But you always use yellow for corn soup. So here I have four cups of split peas. I have my uh, corn, fresh corn that I, uh, I cut up in, you know, nice pieces, nice size pieces, right? In Trinidad, we get the corn that, well, uh, internationally, you, most times you access it where you have to shuck it or peel it for yourself, right? So this is how we get our corn here. In America and the wider world, you all will get like corn on the cob and so forth and so forth. It is okay to use uh, frozen corn and, and things like whatever you can access, right? Just follow all the steps that I'm using. I have some rough chopped pumpkin cubes there. Uh, or diced pumpkin, fresh pumpkin. You can use squash if you live, if you are a citizen living in international world, right? Uh, you will want to wash your split pea, this device, and of course some salt. I'm using iodized salt today. Usually my pre prefer prepping salt to sea salt, but I'm using iodized salt. If you're wondering what this tool is, it's to take the, uh, it's to get the corn off of the cup. Some persons when they are making corn soup, they might put uh, frozen corn bits down in their corn kernel or uh, the ones in the can. But this device comes in handy. You all know I feel about canned food. I'm not saying I don't use it. I just prefer to use it less or limit my use of it as, le as much as possible. Right? So you will need to wash your four cups of the tea. That always depends on how much you are served. And remember, whenever I'm cooking, I'm not... Um, you will know how much persons you are cooking for and you will have to move to soup, right? So make sure it is washed like I said. I'm just washing it quickly. You want to make sure your pot is already, uh, your water is already boiling, right? You all know how I feel about food going into cold water, right? And it helps it to go by faster also when you are um, using hot water to, to cook your, uh, your meals, right? So I'm just about to get my peas in there. You can also go through your peas to see if you have any. Right? To see if you have any that might be discolored or not good whatsoever. Remember, split peas um, it folds. I always tell you guys that, right? I'm using my pressure cooker and yes, I will be pressuring it. I'm going to add now at this stage the salt. Right? I'm going to add about a tablespoon or less half tablespoon one a tablespoon is too much half tablespoon because it's always safer to adjust your your seasoning your salts after cooking right you don't ever want to go too bold with it I'm going to add the pumpkin at this stage you can't shred your pumpkin I shred I mean grate it it's, on, it's up to you but it's gonna melt away like way too much if I shred it in and I'm using the pressure cooker. So it will, it's still going to maintain some nice pieces once I, uh, once I rough chop it or you rough chop it like that for your pressure cooker, okay? So I'm gonna add also the corn. This is like about four corns that I cut. You all saw the size of the pieces. I will raise it in the spoon. You can even see it now. Try as best as you can to get the hair off of the corn, right? As much as of it as you can. This is about the size you want, right? Um, when you are using your pressure cooker and slow cooker, a quick tip, always add oil. So I'm just going to add a bit of my, if I'm not using extra virgin olive oil, I use canola oil, right? So you always want to do that so that you won't have any sticking in the pot because once you get sticking, about there is enough. Once you get sticking in the pot, it will, uh, it can discolor your food greatly, right? So always play it safe and a bit of cooking oil into it, right? I'm just gonna show you guys how to use the device, but first before I, I speak on that, if you wanna know why I purchase it, comment below and I will answer or send me a private message on the business page on Facebook, which is Food by Charmion. Food by Charmion. Um, and I will reply in a timely manner, I guarantee that, right? So, Yes, I was going to say that some persons for depth of flavor, they will also add a cream style corn in there. But I don't usually do that. And remember, I always speak about not doing anything different than I do at home when I come to do a demo for you guys, right? So I'm going to show you all how to use my device. 
I know the corn is looking a bit pale, but don't worry about it, right? It will brighten up as we, as it's cooking. So this is the device. You want to just do like this. And there you have it. That's what this device does. And that's why tools are so important. And you all hear me talk about tools time and time again, right? So it's that easy. You could imagine how quickly you will go by. Uh, how quickly you will go by if you have to do that and you want to do that, whether to grill it or whatever the case might be. You can imagine how quickly you will go by if you don't own that device. It's as simple as just taking a regular knife and doing like this. Just take a regular knife. Excuse me here on the phone, right? You saw what I did, so I'm gonna do it again. Just excuse the bit of here, it's okay. I won't cook it with the here, of course. Just do it like this, and you are done. If you don't own that device, you see now it's coming off, right? So you just wanna go like that, right? It's that simple. I'm just showing you all rough examples that, like I always do. So if I know I would not get into the full uh, taking off all the kernels off of the corn, right? I'm just showing you all rough example. I wanna say again and place emphasis to remove all the hair off of your corn. Once you are dealing with or using fresh corn, please remember to take it off, right? You don't want to serve anyone corn soup that have hair in it, uh, the corn here, or even human hair. So just be careful with things like that, right, guys? You all know how I feel about stuff like that, right? So I'm about to uh, give a stir again on it. I want to say that at this stage, I am not going to season my corn soup, and you shouldn't either, because what it does, the seasoning becomes pretty discolored and makes a very poor presentation. Your seasoning almost becomes a, a dark brown, like when leaves are, when it have dead leaves and falling off of trees or on the ground. Pity that in a beautiful soup this color. It's just don't, you all know I don't kid you all, so please just take my advice, don't put your seasoning into pressure cook at this stage or if you're even you're using your pressure your slow cooker scrap sorry which is called a crock pot in international world this can be done in there but for some reason i don't like the color it, it gives the soup i prefer to do it fresh on the stove it, it, it's not the same take it from me what you can do is probably keep it warm in there but you still don't want to do that because it just is colors this soup right um so you want to just cover things at this stage and this here I'm gonna cover it up now. For those of you that are not pressure cooker, it's gonna go by pretty quickly, right? And of course, I'm gonna show you all me uh, needing the dumplings, right? I'm gonna show you all how I do dumplings and so forth because uh, a traditional, and let me speak a little bit to my fellow Trinidadians, a traditional corn soup, it only, it only contains dumpling and pieces of corn. There is no way you are going to get a traditional corn soup with provisions, ground provisions, or any meat in it. It won't happen. Okay, I just need to clear up that. If you are making a soup and it has meat and provisions in it, you can say it's a soup or a piece-based soup containing corn. But that is not a corn soup. If you are from a nation, you want to know the correct thing, right? So, a traditional Trinidad and Tobago corn soup, if you didn't know, you know now, is it only contains small bite-sized pieces of dumplings, flour dumplings, and plain flour dumplings, and corn and split peas. That is what it contains. You go try to purchase that anywhere in Trinidad and Tobago, and it's sold as corn soup. That is what you are going to get. Okay? I just need to cover that. So, keep watching as I show you all how to do the dumplings, right? So guys, I'm about to make the dumplings. You can also use uh, cornmeal dumplings in there. I'm not making cornmeal dumplings. Cornmeal, we call it cornmeal here in Trinidad. It's also called corn flour in the international world. I am making just plain dumplings, okay? So I have already in here my four cups of flour. You will have to know how much you will need. I'm just sifting it. You don't, you don't necessarily need to do this when you are making dumplings, okay? But sometimes the flour depends on depending on where it's stored at your home or even in the supermarket it may get pumped. So I'm just doing it for that purpose, no other purpose, okay? If you don't own one of these devices, use what is known as a seat here in Trinidad. In the international world, sorry, or a strainer, a handheld strainer. In the Caribbean, not a colander, but a strainer. Right? So there we have it, our flower is if fully sift right this is a sifter most of you know this uh this tool those of you that view my demos you know that too 
saw it time and time again. I'm gonna put a pinch of salt and by a pinch, I mean a pinch. I don't like salt, and remember when we use them dumplings, most time we pick up the flavor of the food that we are. That we put it, that we put in that we are going to use with it as a side dish or whatever the case might be. So take a uh, note of things like that, right? I some persons put uh baking powder in their dumplings. I won't be putting any. The thing with the baking powder it makes for softer dumplings, but you don't want to go berserk with that. I will say to this amount of flour I use if you are making dumplings, you want to use just half teaspoon of uh baking powder, right? But uh and like I said, it makes it softer. Uh, some persons don't like soft dumplings at all, right? So for firm dumplings and for what you're wanting like soup, just follow this method. I'm gonna start adding room temperature water or tap temperature water. You make your well. Remember what I always say, we can always add, okay? This, this dumpling method that I'm using here, when uh, when we was growing up, uh, well, I am a born Trinidadian, if it's the first time of my own that you're watching, I still live in this nation. When we were growing up, this was used for so many different things, you would not believe. Craft stuff, not <laughs> dumplings, you know. There's so much fond memories of childhood here in Trinidad, growing up with extended family, like cousins and so forth. We grew up with our uh, maternal grandparents. So there was a lot of us, so there was always a lot of things to be done. And that is part of what contributed to me being the cook that I am. Right? Time and time again on other demos, I speak about when you are mixing, you need not do of any kind, you want to see a bowl clean. If you don't have a spatula, you can use a pot spoon. If you don't want to use that, you can use your hands. Because that's the flour is needed, but when you are talking commercial cooking, hands barely touch these things because of the amount of work they have. You put it in the machine, the big uh, star mixer. You are just here in the kitchen of the pressure cooker. Remember, this is a demo of fun, so that we are covered, that I'm covering for you all, okay? So you are just hearing, as I'm finished with the dumplings, I'm going to just show you all the pressure cooker and how the regulator and it spins while it's pressuring. It's a pot you want to be very careful when you are using. You want to submerge it in water, half running uh, room temperature water on it. Why I say room temperature, that's in the event you have hot and cold in your kitchen, like I do. You don't want to use that hot water, you want to use, and the, the Americans or international viewers, they, they always have hot water hot and cold okay so you want to make sure what the setting in, in your kitchen tap is on cold when you are trying to drop the temperature of your pressure cooker this is the same way you make dumplings to do anything that you will want in Trinidad and Tobago okay only thing will be different is sometimes you might put cassava in the flour grated cassava you might use coconut in there grated fresh brown coconut you might use it cornmeal and some persons will even make make cold the dumplings uh, Cara dumplings, wheat dumplings. There's a lot of versions of dumplings, right? But more grainy stuff that it can take the um that it can stay in the dough. There's also stuffed dumplings, right? I'll cover that just for you all as I'm progressing. Some person will stuff it with different mix and so forth, right? But it is the same method to make any dumpling. Just put your whatever in it. So I'm gonna show you all a shot of the pressure cooker going. Uh, with our corn soup, I'm just gonna show you all right, and this is how the regulator dances on it, right? When a pressure cooker is in full use and it's hot, there is no way you can open it, it literally locks because of the heat, the pressure that is involved. Because remember, the word of the name of it is pressure cook, is a pressure cooker, right? So, guys, keep watching as I uh, bring this demo to us. Uh, and for you all, right? Just keep looking at it, right? So, guys, this is where our split peas and corn reach to. This is where pressure cook to, and this is this is perfect. About here, right? You can also put uh, shredded carrots in there, 
right? I have a blend of fresh seasonings. You all know that's all I work with. That's all I work with. So I'm just going to remember I spoke on it not going into the pot before now, right? In there is some pimento. Use red if you can get it. Uh, a large uh, shadow uh garlic and onion, right? That's all you will need. If you, if you can't access the shadow Benny, use parsley because in the international world they may not even know what is shallow benny that's an international that's a sorry local or caribbean seasoning that we get right and some of them oh, i had it on set showing what it was right so it's only at this stage you want to ever add your green seasonings to your corn soup and remember i said why like i just said right so you're seeing all that beautiful vibrant reds and greens coming through if i um if i did that before i pressure cook this we will have seen how awful such a beautiful soup will have been looking right so we soon add a bit more of the seasoning i'm getting ready to also put in the dumplings remember i made the dumplings just now right You don't have a uh, pressure uh, slow cooker. Uh, sorry, if you don't own a pressure cooker or a crock pot, which is also called a slow cooker over here, just cook it on the stove following all the steps that I use, right? Because most times we get split peels that cooks very rapidly on the stove. Also, you don't ever want to put saffron in here, right? You, that is not for this. When I cover the authentic dal demo, that is when you need it, not for soups, okay. So about there and i am going to just put a bit more water because i'm going to do the dumplings and of course dumplings make things because it's flour base is going to thicken up my soup so i need to just add a little more water at this stage before i add my dumplings and that's all i'm going to do i don't cook my my corn super coconut milk of course if you want to you can do that i just don't right i don't think it's necessary I need to just cover all my bases, so to speak with you all at all times. So we are going to do the dumplings. You for corn soup, you want your dumplings uh for corn soup, you want your dumplings. For corn soup, you want to sorry about that repeating myself. It happens at times, you all know that. For corn soup, you want your dumplings as small as possible. That's what I was going to say. Right? I also have a scotch bonnet pepper on here to put into the pot. Right? You don't want to ever really pressure cook pepper unless you are doing something that of course for a lot of spice or unless you are cooking many for those that can handle spice. Heat. Scotch bonnet pepper is a very intense hot pepper here locally, right? So here is our dumplings. Remember the tip I gave you the shower cap, the conditioning cap as it is known here in the Caribbean and you just put it, it can fit over any bowl. So I use that to protect my foods right so a bit of seasoning just got on my dough for my hands I'm seeing it so I'm just gonna take it off still you know right just I'm gonna I'm just, I'm not gonna show you all me doing all of this I'm just gonna show you guys I'm gonna just cover back my bowl I'm just gonna show you guys a bit of um a bit of them being done and you know i'm going to uh show you all the ending of course i'm not going to show you have you all just watch me do all of that you know i keep the demos very condensed for a reason right so we are about to i'm going to show you guys how to roll all the dumplings Oh, there are a lot of ways to roll out dumplings right for soup but you rem remember what i just said we want it small we don't want the pieces big what nice clean by sides pieces so i will do something like this i believe it or not some persons won't even roll it out further they will just start doing like this and they will throw that in their pot you understand that you all understood that so I'm just going to roll it for it to be neat. 
it's not going to swell because it does not contain any baking powder the rising agent in it so it's not going to do any puffing and i'm not pressure cooking it of course you all realize at what stage is something is going in okay so it's not going to cause any problem there's also this matter that we do i'm just going to show it because my fellow trinidadians might say you know we miss shami you, you should have covered the traditional way we will roll our dumplings like little uh, macaronis, right? So in Trinidad, we'll also do like this for dumplings and such, right? We do this method, like 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 something like just like this, not something like this, just like this, and then you you cut. So I showed you all both ways. I just want, I just needed to cover that because remember, I have a cooking channel that is native to Trinidad cooking, and I want to show you all some Trini techniques too, also, right? So that's how we will do for our soups, be it uh, broad based soups, whether fish broth or whatever, and for our pea based soup, like what I just did here. So I'm just going to show, show in all put in, I'm saying throw in, that's the way we speak here also. So I'm just going to put in these pieces, not in, we also said that, but in, into my pot, right? So I showed you guys both ways to uh, to get your dumpling for your corn soup, traditional, traditional Trinidad and Tobago corn soup. If you're wondering what the tool I'm using is, it's a bench knife. It's a beloved tool in the pastry world, right? It's just a bench knife. Okay? So keep watching as I bring it to a close for you all. This is about the final step here. We're just waiting for our dumplings to cook. You will know when your dumpling is cooked, of course, right? You see the loveliness we have going on. You always reserve some of your seasoning for uh, about the final couple of seconds before you turn off your pot, whatever you might be cooking. Remember how pale our corn was? But your brilliant color that we have now. I don't believe it's the same corn. Yes, it is. So keep watching that. So guys, this is where our corn soup reach, and this is the end of our Trinidad and Tobago corn soup demo. See how pepper is in here? And remember I told you all, always reserve some of your seasoning for the end of your cooking, right? Because it's almost entirely cooked off, right? So I'm going to just put that bit that I reserve into my pot now, right? But I still remember I don't cook with cooking butter and these things. So if you are wondering, that's the reason you didn't see me add cooking butter. My international viewers, they know nothing about such things and their food is perfect. Right? So and it's not because of that. It's just that it's, it isn't necessary. Right? That's all. That's why I'm not using it. So we have some thick, nice corn. So you see the pieces of the corn in there, right? You are seeing it, and of course our lovely dumplings. This is how our corn looks. I'm just going to plate it against some white. You all see me do that all the time because I happen to love white with food, and that's the end of this demo, guys. This is a lovely vegetarian dish by the way remember no animal product whatsoever was used very lovely vegetarian dish it's a nice appetizer also if you are entertaining at any time right bit more of my dumpling I'm kind of missing my garnish but I don't want to you all know which garnish right parsley let me just clean up the sides with a paper towel yes I'm kind of missing my garnish like seriously you all know how I feel about parsley I hope some of you all share my love for it after being now uh, subscribers and you know supporters and so forth that we all get to love the party as much as I do the health benefits in it is amazing all right we're gonna do a close-up for you guys to see guys as always a pleasure cooking this was my own you all know the business is all about social media literally we are on Instagram we have the YouTube channel here of course and we have 
a Facebook page all under the name Food by Shanion. If you are first time viewer, my first name, first let me welcome you and thank you for watching. But my first name is spelled C H A N I O N. Right? Uh, there's an email address for the business which is foodbyshamion at gmail.com. All common letters. Right? Guys, until I'm with you all, bye and thanks for watching.